All right guys, today we're talking about degas or cooling system pressure on your Ford six liter diesel. We're gonna talk about why you would wanna monitor your degas pressure and uh, some of the variables that affect your degas pressure, what to watch for uh, if you are monitoring your degas pressure. Now first off, why do you wanna monitor your degas pressure? Well, because it's a six liter diesel. We've got issues with the AGR cooler and we've got issues with the head gaskets. Both of those problems are gonna end up with uh, symptoms you can watch on your degas pressure. So if you're running around and think you might have a blown EGR cooler and you're running around think you might have blown head gaskets, you want to put a degas pressure gauge on there. Um, it's one of the best things you can be monitoring if you have any question at all. And even if you don't have any question, it's, uh, it's a good thing to monitor. Uh, it'll tell you a lot about your, your truck and how it's performing, how it's pulling hills, how it's pulling loaded or empty, that sort of thing. Um, it's a good thing to watch right next to your EGTs and your fuel pressure. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do that. Check out my other videos on how I set up a uh, degas pressure gauge in two different ways. Really simple and easy. Um, but yeah, check out those videos. Let's take a step into the cab here. That's my cheap ass pressure gauge. And then here's my Edge EAS degas pressure right there. Um, pretty simple. Uh, easy, easy to monitor and uh, easy to do. And you're gonna, you're gonna see that do a lot more than your fuel pressure gauge. Um, this is going to be sitting between five and eight PSI under normal everyday, you know, grocery getter situations. Um, it's when you're pulling a grade or pulling a heavy load or really working the engine with a heavy tune that uh, you're going to start to see the degas pressure really start to uh, do some some funny stuff and uh, in all reality it's it's all it all comes down to chemistry and science and physics basically you have a closed system the degas bottle is a closed pressure vessel and uh, there's three variables that affect um, the system you've got temperature you got pressure and you've got volume so as volume decreases, your temperature and pressure will increase. As your uh, pressure decreases, your temperature will decrease also, and your volume will increase. Um, it's a three-way system. You increase or decrease one, and the other two respond accordingly. And that's why Ford changed the, the minimum line on your degas bottle. You look at your degas bottle here, that pocket of air in your degas bottle, that's the entire expandable and contractible volume of the degas system. Your cooling system only has that pocket of air to expand and contract and uh, play with. That's why Ford moved the new min line down here somewhere. And uh, that's why most of us that know what we're doing, we actually run our coolant like way down here. Uh, I, I kind of meet the, meet the corner, like right at the edge there, I'll run it up to that corner. I'm actually a little high right now because I just took this out to put that sensor in. But as long as you can see the coolant down here somewhere, you're good. You're actually gonna be a lot better off with a bigger con uh, expansion and contraction volume up here than you would be if you had a little bit more coolant. Um, because water cannot be compressed, you want that air in there to be compressible, okay? And you want the volume of air to be as great as possible. So I would run my coolant right down here to the corner and by all means, never, never, never run up here to the max line. Even Ford's new max line is too high. That leaves me with only this amount of, this amount of air to expand and contract, okay? So let's go back to our three-part system. If that amount of air is considered our volume in our three-part system, as the, coolant, uh, as the coolant heats up and as the metal in the engine heats up, they're going to expand, and that is going to decrease the volume of our pressure vessel there. So as that volume decreases um, with the temperature and the pressure increasing, um, so as that volume decreases the temperature and pressure will increase. Okay, it's a sliding scale. Okay, same being true as the, as the coolant cools down, as the block cools down, the volume is going to increase and your temperature and pres pressure are going to decrease. Okay, so it's, it's a simple system. So if you've got good head gaskets and you don't have a bone EGR cooler, you should only see those three variables affecting each other. You should not see sudden spikes and sudden weird things happening like you will see if you have bone head gaskets or you have uh, a bone EGR cooler. 
Okay, so let's go back into the cab here. So under normal operating conditions, you're, you're going to start out at zero under degas pressure and it's slowly going to work its way up to, you know, between, you know, around six to seven PSI. That's normal driving uh, situations. And that's going to be anywhere from like 180 to 200 degrees. You're going to see between five and eight degrees. So between 180 and 200 should be between five and eight PSI. So, okay, that's straight, straight science and chemistry. As this temperature increases though, say you're pulling a heavy hill, or you're pulling a trailer up a hill, or you're running really hot, as your temperatures go up <clears throat> over 200, so too is your degas pressure it's going to increase. In fact, uh, pulling like a 15,000 pound trailer up a nice steep grade, where it's dropping down to like third gear and you're going up at like 2100 RPMs and you're just kind of like, you know, walking your way up the hill, your temperatures are going to get up to uh, like 231, 232. That's pulling a heavy ass trailer. Up around 230, your degas PSI is actually going to really, it's going to reach the relief point of your degas cap. It's going to be up there around 16 PSI. That's normal. As long as your temperature is what put it up to that point. Now, if you're under normal operating uh, conditions, you're just driving around town and you see 16 PSI, that's when you've got a problem, okay? Most people will never see 230. I just see that because I pull heavy trailers up hills for a living, okay? Most of you are never gonna see 16 PSI for your degas pressure under normal operating conditions, okay? So now let's talk about what you are gonna see if you do, let's talk about the variables that will get you up to uh, 16 PSI under normal operating conditions. And there's only two, you got your EGR cooler, and you've got your head gaskets, okay? With a blown EGR cooler, you're probably gonna be seeing steam out the tailpipe. And this is gonna jump from wherever it is up past 16 really quick, because it's basically like steam pressurizing the cooling system. Uh, because all that exhaust gas is basically pressurizing and turning all that water into steam straight into your cooling system, it's gonna jump up there and instantly release and purge your degas system pressure. Okay, um, but with the blown EGR cooler, you're most likely going to be seeing, you're also going to be seeing that as steam out of the tailpipe too. Not always, but a lot of times. So if this jumps up way quick and it's blown out, it's responding to the throttle, it's, it's crazy, it's probably EGR cooler. Um, however, if, if, if it goes up slowly, uh, or slowly to moderately quickly, then it's head gaskets, okay? Um, if you start out at zero um, and you start uh, you let it warm up and you start driving, you start going down the, the driveway and it gets up to 15 PSI and just stays there, that's blown head gaskets, okay? When I had blown head gaskets, it would, uh, under normal operating conditions, it'd be right, right around 14. And then once I started driving it, um, I mean, I'm just talking idling, it would get up to about 14. And then I would start driving it and it would like sit there at 15 uh, and just kind of like hang out at the relief point of the, the, uh, the degas cap. That's when I had really bad blown head gaskets. That was with the Blackwater engine right after I got it. Uh, I had brand, brand new Black Diamond uh, head gaskets in it, and it, they were blown right when I got the engine. Um, it would hang out right around 13, 14, and any kind of load at all, it would just hit the relief point of the degas pressure, the degas cap. If you start out and uh, you're, uh, you get up to 15 like relatively quickly, and uh, you've already uh, taken your EGR cooler system out of the equation, then you definitely have blown head gaskets, okay? You should not see more than 10 PSI under normal operating conditions. And that's like anywhere from 180 to, you know, about 205, 210, you're not gonna see over 10 PSI, unless you're running like, unless you're running your coolant system way high. Uh, normal operating is gonna be between five and 10. Okay, now, when you're starting up your truck every morning, it's good to go ahead and let it come up to five PSI. Uh, that's kind of like where I sit. Right when it gets to about, you know, 185, you're gonna be almost at five PSI. And that's right when I'll start moving the vehicle. That's, uh, I do that to baby my engine and because I ran so long with bonehead gaskets, I kind of take, take really good care of my, my engine. 
So, um, if you if you're running completely stock, if you've got a stock set up, you don't have uh, you don't have head studs, you're not tuned. Um, I would run a degas pressure gauge over an EGT gauge. I ran stock for two years pulling a trailers, and your your EGTs are going to be fine. Stock setup will not blow, will not get hotter than your pistons can handle. Um, so as long as you're not running tuned, you don't even need to worry about uh, an EGT probe. Um, I would go degas first, especially if you're not running studded. You're going to want want to watch your degas pressure um, over anything else because if you don't have studs. Um, you know, the likelihood of having head gasket problems is much more likely. Uh, once you start tuning, you're definitely going to want to go to EGT probe and uh, you're going to want to monitor all your temperatures, your degas pressure, um, and your boost. Uh, that's just a no-brainer. You don't want to be uh, melting your pistons there. So uh, check out my other videos. I got a video uh, putting a transmission uh, pressure in there transmission pressure sender, uh, my, my new uh, fuel pressure transducer. I got two ways to do that uh, fuel pressure as well. That's my old gauge down there. Um, be sure to check out those videos. Next video is going to be uh, actually installing the pressure sensors for the DGAS system.